malfunctioning. Great. What was that, Ripley? Nothing. Just more shit on this station fucking up. The usual. Built by the Creative Assembly team, who were founded in 1987 and bought out by Sega in the later years of 2005, they were originally responsible for porting games for MS-DOS to the Amiga, a Commodore model of PC. Proof that this company has been in the game for quite some time now. More notably, in today's modern age of PCs, they are responsible for Shogun, the Total War series, which they consider their own original invention and a benchmark in strategy games. They are based in the UK. Alien Isolation had a lengthy development time and was said to have started its development around 2008, meaning that its incubation was about six years within Sega. It was released on the 7th of October 2014 to mostly high acclaim, starring a cameo or two, more notably Sigourney Weaver, from the original film Alien, which was released in 1979 which back then, and still to this day, haunts the horror section of the few open video stores. Starting up the game, its style is apparent, almost immediately noted, greeted with a very nostalgic logo, reminiscent of the old green-tinged CRT monitors of yesteryear, an opening to a menu complete with Jupiter-esque planet conjoined with familiar music from the original Alien film. It can be said that fans are in for a treat in this FPS survival horror, and those of you who are not familiar, if you have the patience, Alien Isolation is genuinely one of the few games in recent years that really puts you under duress, especially if you are using the Xbox One Kinect features. After doing research on the title, it's said that the original concept was pitched to Sega as a game of hide and seek, and it's apparent that this has remained throughout development. During development, it was said that the third person was experimented with, choosing to have a first person view though, throughout the game, apart from some cutscenes, was a wise choice. It builds atmosphere and tension, requiring you to rely on sound cues from the environment around you, which range from rumbles to footsteps, electronic clunking, and all sorts of 70s sci-fi-esque sounds. Pacing throughout the game has a strange arrhythmia. Like the Alien film, it feels slow, at least for today's standards. For the amount of actual cinematics that were part of the whole experience, there are too many empty spaces in between, and it won't be long before you find yourself frustrated with the amount of people, androids, and aliens that want to kill you. For the overall cheap payoff, Within there, there is a section or two that pits you against androids for a while, which was pleasant because the fear subsided, but it borderlines on uninteresting. The conclusion of the main story is somewhat of a letdown, and the conclusion to the Apollo arc where I entered a huge grandiose looking sphere was severely disappointing. Most of the time, there are just fantastic bits of the game in action and non-in-game action. The opening, which is very cinematic and beautifully presented, is just a small chunk of your experience. Quickly, you find yourself stranded on a ship, much like Rapture in Bioshock that has you stranded in a strange city. It's been trashed by some sort of disaster. It wasn't for two hours or so after the beginning that you are confronted with the inevitable alien encounter, and it's from this point on in that you are required to sneak around, hide in cupboards, boxes, behind chairs, under desks, in vents, within smoke, anywhere the alien can't see you. Thanks to the Kinect on the Xbox One, the Xenomorph will hear you and come running to your position if you make loud noises, turning your whole lounge room into a tense scene, which works wonderfully. Also, you are able to use the Kinect to tilt your head, looking around corners, or moving your head back when the alien comes sniffing at the cupboard you are desperately hiding in. Throughout the experience, many areas are locked off due to lack thereof equipment, which reminds me of Metroid in the way that you aren't able to proceed to new areas without an upgrade. The tools are all super retro and have been brilliantly animated. Save stations are in the form of emergency phones, and adding to the tension, there's a three second delay before saving. A great technique for building tension. Also, some elevators will take 30 to 40 seconds to noisily arrive, requiring you to be sure you have a place to hide, just in case an angry looter or angry android or angry alien comes to the sound of the noise. 
It's worth mentioning that you are able to craft equipment using bits of scraps and glue scattered around the station. You can make smoke bombs, noisemakers, flashbangs, molotovs, EMP, grenades, and, well, quite a few things. Without question, Alien Isolation is one of the most atmospheric science fiction games I've played. When it comes to the sheer amount of detail, the lighting is brilliant. Throwing a flare will change the whole colour of the room, the mood even. Walking past an open window, seeing the gas giant in space looks tremendous, and watching the shadow of a xenomorph walk past the light source is helpful, terrifying and beautiful all at once. The animations at Ripley, your character, daughter of the original alien protagonist, are spot on, all done in first person. The way she welds open doors, moves grates, types in computers and touches the environment are all Kill. superb. Shooting androids that get in your way produces spurts of white blood that textures itself onto the environment. Setting them on fire creates these intense particles of anger. And interacting with computers, dials, levers, keypads and hacking devices make you feel as though you are part of the original set. Loading times have been tastefully done by recording in-game footage onto a VHS, and that's a video cassette for those of you not in the know, and then they recorded it uh, to give it that old school feel. It's really, really good stuff. With a combination of top-notch animation, graphics and some intriguing, somewhat terrifying AI, it's fitting that sound design of the game is also up to the quality you would expect. The creaking, rattling, banging, clicking, screeching, hissing, screaming nature of the station has you on edge, as you would always be on the lookout for that pesky xenomorph. Apart from some dull sections where you are exploring, it was more than once that I heard a computer or random bump that made me tense up for fear of being insta-killed by the creeping foe. The voice acting, especially the brief cameos, are well done and the androids have a rather detached, ironic way of speaking to the character as they try to strangle the life out of you. Why not ask <gasps> about Sevastopol's safety protocols? The soundtrack is mostly dynamic, changing depending on situation. It's just a shame there wasn't more scripted composition, for when it was present, it sparked awe and wonder. Overall, Alien Isolation provides truly a step in the right direction, to establishing fear within the character and the person playing as her. Being killed simply by being detected is enough to set anyone back who hasn't saved recently. It's just the start of the fear. The clever tricks throughout the game that induce tension are many, but sometimes it makes you wonder how much duress an average player can take before he or she puts the controller down out of frustration. Is it too hard to be any fun? When can Ripley get a break? I hope that in sequels there are more alternatives to avoiding an instant death, perhaps a struggle button or more alternate routes than usual. Two only seem ever present, vent or not an event. Regardless, they are tools to aid in your quest to reduce the tension. It's the duress that I felt in this game that made it so immersive, frustrating and awesome. It's been a long time since I've had nightmares after playing a game, but I'm willing to go back to experience it all again. I'm Max Korobax at Idiot Box Games.